All right, this is probability test review from chapter 3B. I'm going to do every problem on this review. So if you uh, know certain questions, you can just skip over those and fast forward to the questions you need help with. Okay, so we're going to start off with uh, number one here. A group of employees were asked if they smoke. The responses are listed in this table. So here's people that smoke male, female, and total, does not smoke, male, female, total, and then here's your total, so like your total male, your total female, and then your overall total, there's 220 people in this thing, okay, now, if an employee is selected at random, find the probability the employee smokes, okay, all right, so we know on probability, and we're going to do probability that they smoke, it's going to be the desired divided by the total. Okay, what's desired here is that they smoke. And if you look at smoke, there's 86 total people that smoke. So that's going to be my desired. And on the bottom, I got the total, which is 220. And I just divide those. All right, so here's my calculator. Uh, 86 divided by 220 and it looks like we got uh, 0 0.3909 this 9 makes the 0 go up to 1 so 0 0.391 and uh, okay. 0 0.3909 alright I think I got my answers over here check make sure uh, yep that's right we're in good shape all right, we'll go to number two then. Okay, get her lined up. All right, a group of students were asked if they're right-handed or left-handed. The responses are listed in the table. So just like a while ago, here's right-handed boys, right-handed girls, and then here's total. Left-handed boys, left-handed girls, total. And then we have boys, left, right-handed, left-handed, total. All right. And there's 132 total students, looks like. Okay, now the question says, if a student is selected at random, find the probability that the student is a girl. All right, so we want the probability that this student is a girl. So what's desired is that it's a girl, so it looks like we have 53 total girls out of 132 total. So I just divide those. All right, so let's see here. Uh, 53 divided by 132 all right looks like 4015 the 5 makes the 1 go up to 2 so 0.402 uh, so 402 right there and that is right according to my key all right here's another one S a similar thing here if an employee is selected at random find the probability that the employee smokes given that the employee is female all right so we've got they smoke but it's given that this is a female so what that is it's a probability that a person smokes given that they're female okay so what that's going to be is that's going to be the uh, uh, the probability that they smoke and female divided by the probability that they're female okay and as I showed you before basically what we can do is instead of just find the probability we just find those that are smoking and female which uh, let's see here smoking and female looks like that's smoking and female that's 32 and then the total female female right here 95 so I just would divide those two right there okay so Looks like 32 divided by 95, and what is that there? 0.3368, eight. eight makes the six go up to seven, so 0.337. And uh, let's see these right here, 0.337. And that is right, we're gonna keep. Okay, uh oh. Now, what about this one here, number four? A group of employees were asked if they smoke. Same thing. 
If an employee is selected at random, find the probability that the employee is male given that the employee does not smoke. All right, so it's probably that they're male given that they don't smoke. Okay, now again, that's going to be the probability that they're male and they don't smoke divided by the probability uh, that they don't smoke. Okay, the second one goes on the bottom here. All right, so probably that they're male and they don't smoke. Looks like male and do not smoke is right there, 71. The probably that they don't smoke down here at the bottom, there's 134 that don't smoke. So I'm going to divide those two numbers there. And again, this is not the probability, but uh, they both will have the same denominator, which will cancel out. So we could just put these numbers, 71 and 34, 134. What I'm saying is the probability that they're male and don't smoke is actually 71 over 220. And the probability that they don't smoke is 134 over 220, but the 220s will cancel out. And so we just put these numbers here. I'm just going to divide those. If that makes sense. 71 divided by 134 looks like 0.5298. The 8 makes the 9 go up to a 10, which makes this go up to 530. 0.530. And uh, there's my answer right there. 0.530. And that's right, according to the key. Number five, okay, same thing here. A student selected at random, find the probability that this student is left-handed given that the student is a boy. So we want the probability that they're left-handed given that it's a boy. All right, so it's gonna be the probability that they're left and boy divided by the probability that they're a boy. All right, so left-handed and boy is right there, 22. And the Total boys, 34. So 22 over 34. So 22 divided by 34 looks like 0 0.6470, so 6 point, or 0 0.647. Well, did I hit a number wrong? Uh, That's not the right answer there. Let's do this again. The answer says it's A, 278 here. Let's look at this again. I made, made a mistake. Left-handed given that the student is a boy. Oh. Yeah, this number down here is wrong. All right. That should be 79. The probably their boy is right over here, 79. I did a flub up. And you gotta be careful on this. So I made a mistake here and you can too. So you gotta be careful. You get the right thing. So that's 22 divided by 79. 0.278, yeah. All right, there's a big boo boo there. But you gotta make sure you get the right things on the bottom and the top and the bottom. So it's easy to make a mistake. Number six, okay, same thing. as. If a student is selected at random, find the probability that the student is a girl, given that the student is right-handed. So probability that they a girl, given that they're right-handed. Okay, so it's going to be probability a girl and right-handed, divided by probability that they're right-handed. Right, we'll get this one right this time, okay? So their girl and right-handed is right there, 41. Probably that they're right-handed. Right-handed is right there, 98. Okay. The second one is always on the bottom. So you got G and R on top, and then the second one that you're given is on the bottom. So uh, let's see here, 41 divided by 98. Looks like 0. 0.418. The three does not make the eight go up, so 0. 0.418 is my answer and that's right so it's right on the key and right there it is all right number eight <clears throat> decide if the events a and b are mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive a die is rolled the result is a three the result is an odd number now to be mutually exclusive okay remember this these are uh, events that can 
not happen at the same time. Okay? Mutually exclusive is events that cannot happen at the same time. So if I have, if I roll this die and I get a three, can that happen at the same time we get an odd number? Well, certainly, because three is an odd number. So this is not mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive means they cannot happen at the same time. Number nine, decide if these are mutually exclusive. The result is, a, oh, you're uh, getting a card from a standard deck of 52 playing cards. The result is a seven. The result is a jack. Can these happen at the same time? No, if you get a set, if you get a card, there's no possible way this card can be a seven and a jack. So these are mutually exclusive. Okay. Now, suppose it was a, a seven and a heart. Could you get these? Yes, you could get those. So this would not be mutually exclusive. Okay. All right, number 10. Decide whether the events shown in the company Venn diagram are mutually exclusive. All right, here's my Venn diagram right there. Are these mutually exclusive? No, because you see they're overlapped right there. So there's some here that are both in both of these. Now, we didn't even read what it was about. Movies that are rated PG, movies that are recently, or movies that receive mostly positive reviews. Well, yeah, man, I've seen lots of PG-13 movies that get positive reviews. So that's not mutually exclusive. Okay. Now, uh, talking about movies here, suppose you had this. Suppose you had this Venn diagram. And in this one, we got G rated movies. And over here, we got PG rated movies. All right, you can't have a movie that's both G and PG. So this would be mutually exclusive. Okay. So I think you have to select what it is. The events are mutually exclusive since there are no, or I'm sorry, since there, I'm, I'm, I'm screwing myself up. I'm thinking of the one I, I drew here. These are not mutually exclusive. They are not mutually exclusive since there, uh, there are some movies that are rated PG-13 and receive, uh, mostly positive reviews. Okay, so that's how you'd answer this one. Okay. 11. Determine whether the following events are mutually exclusive. Alright, here's another one. So, uh, event A, randomly selecting a voter who legally voted for the president in New Hampshire. And then B, randomly selecting a voter who legally voted for the president in Iowa. Okay. Well, you can't vote for president in New Hampshire and in Iowa. You can't vote in two different states. Uh, not legally. See, it says legally. So uh, these are mutually exclusive. So these are mutually exclusive since it is not possible for a voter to both have legally voted for president in New Hampshire and uh, have legally voted for president in Iowa. You can't vote in both states legally. All right, so this is mutually exclusive. Number 12, of the cartons produced by company, 6% have a puncture, 4% have a smashed corner, and 0.5% have both a puncture and a smashed corner. Find the probability that a randomly selected carton has a puncture or a smashed corner. They have one or the other. All right, so this is gonna use the addition rule. Okay, we want to find the probability that it has a puncture or a smashed corner. All right, the way we do that is we, we uh, uh, find the probability that it has a puncture plus the probability that it has a smashed corner. We add them together, but then we got to subtract off the probability that they have a puncture and a smashed corner. We have to subtract that off. Now, there's going to be a problem in just a couple minutes that uh, may help you understand this a little better. But, uh, or I'll show you here after we do this. Help you understand this better. All right, so the probability that they has a puncture is, uh, 
Six percent. Six percent have a puncture. So this is six percent. Okay. Four percent have a smash corner, it says. So they probably have smash corners. Four percent. So I add those together. But I got to subtract off those that have both. So uh, let's see here. Right here, 0.5% have both a puncture and a smash corner. So this is a 0.5. And so I add 6 plus 4 is 10, minus 0.5 is 9.5%. And that should be my answer right there, 9.5. And on the key over here, that is right, okay? Now let me show you, uh, i tell you what. Let me go back to one of these previous problems right here we did, right here, in this table right here, okay, and uh, I'll help explain that addition rule. What's the probability that uh, you select a a student at random, see this is talking about the boy and a girl and left-handed, right-handed. What's the probability that it's a boy or a right-handed person? Okay. All right, this is going to be the probability that it's a boy plus the probability that they're right-handed minus the probability that they're a boy and right-handed. Okay, because see, here's what happens. The probability that they're a boy, okay, if you look at your boys, there's 79 boys, which, let me do this in red here, which are these two right here. So that's your probability boy, 79. Okay, there's 79 of those. Probably they're right-handed. All right, here's your right-handed ones right here. There's 98 of those. So I add them together. They're either a boy or they're right-handed. But see, here's what happens. This 57 right here gets added both times. So you're adding a 57 in with the boys, but then you're adding a 57 in with the right-handed ones. So you've got to minus off that 57. And that's how this addition rule comes into play. When you do the probability of the boy and the probability that they're right-handed, you're adding this twice, so that's why you have to subtract it off. So maybe that helps, under, helps you understand the addition rule. Okay. Let's go to 13. All right, 13, the estimated percent distribution of a certain country's population for 2025 is shown in the accompanying pie chart, which is down here at the bottom. Here's the pie chart. Okay. Find the probability in each event listed in parts A through D below. All right, so A says, uh, randomly selecting someone who is under five years old. What's the pro uh, probability of that? They're under five years old. Well, if you look at there, under five years old is right there, 5.9. That's going to be 5.9%. Okay, which is right. Okay, on this one. Randomly selecting someone who is 45 years old or over. 45 or over. So if I look at the pie chart here, 45 to 64, 65. So it would be all three of these right here. So I would add them up. So let's do that real quick. Okay, so I have uh, 23.6 plus, I've got 11.9 plus, and I got 7.2, and that's 42.7. Okay, so this is uh, 42.7, and according to the key, that's right. I'll see here, randomly selecting someone who is not... 65 years old or over okay they're not 65 or older so they're not these two so they got to be all those now what you can do the complement like we learned before you could add these two right here and subtract from one i'm gonna do it both ways this just uh it's they're not 65 or older so which means they're all these right here and that takes a little bit longer to add them up but i'm gonna add them up uh, all right 5.9 plus 11.3, plus 6.5, plus 6.8, plus 13.2, plus 13.5, plus 23.6, and then there you go, that's 80.8. 80.8, 80 
which, uh, which uh, it says 80.9. I must have hit something wrong here. Let's see. 5.9, 11.3. Uh, Six point five, six point eight. It looks like I hit them all right. I don't know. So it says eighty point eight. Okay, let's now let's do this right here. Eleven point nine plus seven point two. If I add those two, and then I do. One subtract that, which is uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's percent. So one subtract point uh, one nine one, and you get point eighty point nine, which is what the answer says. Uh, I think though, if you put eighty point eight or eighty point nine, it'd probably count either one of them. All right, so uh, 80.9. Now the last one here. The randomly selecting someone who's between 20 and 34. All right, so between 20 and 34, you'd be looking at these two right here. So we just add them up. So that'd be uh, 20. That's even 20. Okay, if you add them up, you get 20. All right, so there you go. 14. All right, now this one here, we've got uh, 14. I got this Pareto chart that goes with it. Okay. The responses of 1,041 adults. This is important right here. There's 1,041 in a certain region to survey question about the story of Britain's vote to leave the European Union are shown in the company Pareto chart. Find the probability of each event listed in parts A through D below. Okay, so we're going to use this Pareto chart here to answer these questions. So number, uh, first one, A. Okay, randomly selecting, right here, A. Okay, randomly selecting an adult who thinks the story is somewhat important. All right, somewhat important. So, all right, so let's see here. Uh, somewhat important right here is C okay so on C here if you notice oh man the C is this one and there's 335 all right so there's 335 out of this 1041 right here okay and then we would divide those all right so all right, so here we go. Uh, 335 divided by 1,041, and I get this rear point, 3218. The eight makes the one go up to a two, so 0.322. And that's right on the key. All right, part B. Random second adult who thinks the story is not at all important. All right, let's go right here. Not at all important is E. All right, so if I look at my E here, here's E right here. All right, so there's 125 of those. So this is going to be 125 divided by 1,041. Okay, so if I do that, uh, 125 divided by 1041, and it looks like uh, 0 0.1200, so 0 0.120, and that's right. Okay, part C, randomly selecting an adult who thinks the story is not too important or not at all important. So we've got to add those together. So not too important. All right, not too important is D, not important at all is E. So D and E, I got to, see not too important, not at all important. I got to add those two together, which is D and E. All right, so here's D. And E right here, side by side. So that's 204 and 125. So 204, 125, that's going to be 329. Okay. So there's 329 of those out of 1,041. So I divide those. All right, so uh, let's see here. 
329 divided by 1041, and I get this right here, 0.316. All right, 0.316 is right. Okay, one more to this question. All right, part D, randomly selected an adult who thinks this story is extremely important or very important. All right, extremely important or very important. All right, so uh, extremely important is A, very important is B. So we're, we're going to add A and B together. So if you look at the uh, chart here, here's B right there. So we got two, 253, and then A is right there, 103. So you add them together, 653, 356. So there's 356 of those out of 1,041. Okay, so 356 divided by 1041. Okay, 0. 0.341, the 9 makes 1 go up to 2. 0. 0.342, and that is right. Okay. All right, 15 here. All right. The table below shows the result of a survey that asked 1,056, probably going to need that again, adults from a certain country if they favored or opposed a tax to fund education. A person is selected at random. Complete parts A through C. Okay, so here you go. You see males and females. Support, oppose, unsure. we got three different things going on with males and females. You see your totals at the bottom and on the side. Okay. And you see here, there's 1,056 total people. All right, find that probably the person opposed the tax or is female. Okay. All right, so probably that they... they Oppose or female. Now remember, that's going to be the probability that they oppose plus the probability that they're female minus the probability that they oppose and female. Okay. All right, so uh, the probability that they oppose, right here, there's 637 of those plus the probability that they're female Female, all right, there's 552 of those. Now, actually, the, the probability is that divided by the 1,056, but we can just put the 1,056 on it after we add these up and stuff. Now, the probability that they oppose and female, oppose and female would be this 305 right there. See there, female and oppose? That's 305. So I do this addition rule. Anytime you have probably that it's this or this, we add these two, subtract off the and, that they're both. So, let's add these up. So, uh, 637 plus 552 minus 305. And I get this 884. So it's going to be 884 divided by the total 1,056. So divide by 1056. And you see my answer right there, 0 0.837. The 1 does not make the 7 go up, so 0 0.837 is my answer right there. And uh, that's right. That's right on the key. Now, part B, find the probability that the person supports the tax or is male. All right, so probably that they support or male. Okay, SORM. <laughs> SORM. All right. So that's going to be the probability that they support plus the probability that they're male minus the probability that they support and male. Okay. All right. So the probability that they support, how many support? 393 right there. This is 393. All right. What's the probability that they're male? All right. Male is right there, 504. And again, this is 504 over that, but we're just put. Put this under after we get these added up and stuff. Minus the probably they support and their male. All right, support and male is right here. You see that? Support and male is 164, so I have to subtract that off. Okay. So we're 393 plus 504 minus 164, and I get this right here, 7. 53, so it's going to be 753 divided by the total 1056. 
which gives me this right here. 0.694, the one does not make the four go up, so it's 0.694. And that's right, on the key. And again, maybe I should uh, re remind you about this. See, when you have this, when you have this table here, uh, when you want right-handed or that it's a boy, see this 57 is counted twice. So that's why you have to add these on and subtract this off because you're adding it twice. When you add your right-handeds and you add your boys, this gets added twice. So that's, what, that's why we have to do this addition rule. That's why it comes in play. All right, see here. Find the probability that the person is not unsure, that they're not unsure, or is female. So probably that they're not unsure or female. So it's gonna be probably that they're not unsure plus the probably that they're female minus the probably that they're not unsure uh, and female. We're in another room here. Okay. So probably that they're not unsure. All right, so if you go here, all right, here's how many are unsure. Look here, but they don't see where there's no column that says not unsure. But here's 26 that are unsure, okay? And there's a 1,056 total. All right, so if you do 1,056 uh, 1, minus the 26, you get 1,030. So on this right here, there's 1,030 that are not unsure. Plus, the probably they're female. Now, if you look at your female, here's your females right here, 552. There's 552 of those. Okay. Minus the probably that they're not unsure and they're female. All right, now look here. All right, so. They're not unsure and they're female. All right, so uh, again, there's no not unsure column. All right, so there's 18 females that are not, that are unsure. And there's 552 total females. So if I subtract those, I'll get those that are female and not unsure. Or I could just add these two numbers here together. See, if I add these two right here together, that's females that are not unsure. They either support or they or oppose. So that's going to be 534. Okay. So we have 1,030 plus 552 minus 534. And I get this right here, 1,048. And there's 1,056 total. Uh-oh. It seems like I did something wrong here. I don't know. Divide by 1,056 and I get 0.992. That's that's right. It just seemed like the numbers weren't right, but that's right. Okay. Now, uh, 16 down here. Let's perform this. All right. Now, these are permutations. So, uh, we're going to use our calculator. We're going to do 6P3. What this means is you have six things and you're choosing three of them and the order matters. This is permutations. So we're just typing these in. Okay, so uh, six and I'm gonna go to uh, NPR and three, divide by 10, NPR again, and four. And I get this right here, point five seven one four. Uh, ran it to four places, so five seven one four, and the two does not make the four go up, so point five seven one four, and that's not right. Oh, I hit NCR accidentally. Yep, sure did. All right, so I want to delete that and uh, do this again. NPR four. All right, point oh two three eight. That's right. Point oh two three eight. The light is real bright here, and I couldn't see that I hit the wrong button. 
Okay. All right, now let's look at permutations. This problem here, determine whether the following problem involves a permutation or a combination. Explain your answer. Okay. How many different five-letter passwords can be formed from the letters H, I, J, K, L, M, and N if no repetition of letters is allowed? Okay. This is permutation because a permutation order matters. P-O-M. I, I used to tell this a lot. Pom. P-O-M. Like pom-poms. <laughs> the cheerleaders pom-poms. Permutation order matters. And so this would be a permutation problem. So let's look here. So you know it's not this one. Permutation because the order in which the letters matter. It's B. The order matters. Okay. Combination the order does not matter. All right, number 18. Okay, there are 16 finalists in a singing competition. The top four singers receive prizes. How many ways can the singers finish first through fourth? Okay, now, first through fourth. There are 16 finalists, okay. The top four singers receive prizes. All right, so uh, I'm assuming that since these 16, these four prizes is a uh, first through fourth, then I'm assuming that uh, this, the order matters. So this is going to be a permutation problem. First, because you got first place, second place, third place, fourth place. So I'm going to do 16 and I'm going to do NPR because order matters four. And it's 43,680. Oops, the calculator's on the screen. Okay. 43680. And that is right. That is on the key. All right, so now, if it just says that the 16 finalists, the top four, move on, and there's no first through fourth, then that would be a combination. Because the order wouldn't matter then. But, but the order does matter here, first through fourth. All right, 19. An archaeology club has 27 members. We've got 27 members. How many different ways can the club select a president, a vice president, treasurer, and a secretary? So there's four positions here. Well, order would matter here because, see, here's, here's what you can say. Suppose I have person A, B, C, and D. Alan, Ben, uh, Catherine, and David. Alan, Ben, Catherine, and David. Okay? Well, is that the same as this? In other words, the first one is president, the second one's vice president, the third one's treasurer, and the fourth one's secretary. No, this is different, because see, this is uh, Ben as president, and that's Alan as vice president. We're here, Alan's president, and Ben's vice president. So the order matters on this. So this is a permutation. This is a permutation of uh, 27 members, and we're gonna select four of them, okay? So I'm going to type that in. 20, here, let me get the screen up here. 27 NPR 4. And that's 421,200. 421,200. And that is uh, right, yeah. All right, number 20 here. A certain lottery has 37 numbers. And how many different ways can five of the numbers be selected? All right, here you go. Now, look here. Assume the order of selection is not important. So, see, you just want those five numbers. So, now, the order does not matter for this. Because if I pick one, two, three, four, and five, that's the same thing as one, three, two, four, or five. These are the same five numbers. The order doesn't matter. So, this would be a combination. So, it's, it's going to be uh, 37, and we're selecting five numbers. It's going to be a combination of that. Okay, so 37 in CR5, and that's 435,897. 435,897, and that is correct on the key. Okay, 21. All right. 
Five company representatives are to be chosen from the 24 workers of the bank to attend a, the training conference in June. How many ways can five representatives be selected or chosen? All right, so we have 24. We're going to select five. Okay, we got that down. Is this a P or a C? Is it a P out here or is it a C? Well, in this problem, it doesn't appear like the order matters because how many ways can five representatives be chosen? We're just choosing five. It doesn't say that there's any certain order that being first is better than being fifth. So this is a combination. The order does not matter here. All five of them are going. So I'm going to do 24 in CR5. And that's, uh, uh oh I must hit something wrong. Oh, yeah. 24 in CR5. And that's going to be 42,504, and that is correct. For your D. Okay. 22. 12 runners are competing in a race. Prizes will be given to first, second, and third place finishers. How many different ways can the prizes be awarded? So there's 12 runners. There's three winners. The order does matter because there's a first, a second, and a third. So the P, the order matters. It's going to be permutation this time. So I'm going to do 12, oh, here we go. 12 in PR, 3, 1,320. Right there, Calculate 5 factorial. So remember, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's what 5 factorial is. And, uh, on this one, I think it's 120. I think I know that one, 120. 20 times 6 is 120. But you can type it on your calculator, uh, like this right here. Here's 5, and if you go to the uh, probability here, see there's the little factorial thing right there. 5 factorial, which is 120. All right. All right, 24. A bowl has 24 chocolate candies, consisting of 6 white chocolate, 8 dark chocolate, and 10 milk. Alright, so let's write this down. we got 24 candies. we got 6 white. we got 8 dark. We have 10 milk. What's the probability that all three... Oh, I'm sorry. Suppose you reach in the bowl and randomly grab three. So you're going to get three candies. What's the probability that all three are white chocolate? Okay. So remember your probability that uh, three are white. That's your desired over your total. Okay. So what's desired here is all three are white. So what we want here then is we want... Uh, of the six white, we desire three of them. Okay. On the bottom, there's 24 total. See, the bottom's a total. So on the bottom, there's 24 total, and we're selecting three total. So that's how you'd set it up. Okay. So now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do six. And th th these are combinations because the order doesn't matter how you get these three candies. It does. The order of them doesn't matter. So it's going to be 6 NCR3 and then divide by 24 and then NCR3. And that's going to be 0 0.09. Let's change it to a fraction. 5 over 506. There it is right there, B. That's it right there. And that is right, yeah. Okay. The next one, same kind of question. And actually, it's the same numbers. So... I'll write them out here again. We got six white, we got eight dark, we have ten milk, and total there's 24 total. Okay, now suppose you reach in the bowl and grab three candies just like a while ago. What's the probability that all three are milk chocolate? Okay, so what's desired here of the ten milk chocolates? We desire three of those. On the bottom, there's 24 total, and we're selecting three total. And so that's what I punch in this time. All right. So I'm going to have 10 in CR3 divide by 24 
NCR 3, and I get this, change it to a fraction, 15 over 253. Right there, B. Okay. All right, next one here, 26. A bowl has 24 chocolates. Same, it's the same. We got 24 total. Okay, we got six white. We got eight dark. We have 10 milk. Okay. Suppose you reach in a bowl and randomly grab three candies. What's the probability that two are milk? What's the probability that two are milk? Okay. So probably that we have two milk. All right, so remember, what's desired is of the 10 milk, we desire two of those, okay? Which means we're getting three, so that last one has to be one of these two, right? It's gotta be white or dark, because we just want two milk chocolates. So I'm getting three candies, so the last one's gotta be one of these 14. So that means of the other 14, we desire one of those. Okay? So again, the probably that two are milk chocolate. So it means of the 10 milk chocolates, we desire two of those. And of the other 14, we desire one of those. And on the bottom, there's 24 total and we're selecting three total. That's the same every time on the bottom. Okay? So as I punch this in, okay? I'm going to type in 10 NCR2 times 14 NCR1, and I'm going to divide by 24 NCR3. And I get this, change it to a fraction, 315 over 1,012. Right there, B. Man, every one of these are B. <laughs> Don't do that on a test, man. Don't just select them on a test because sure enough on the test they'll all be... C or D. All right, here's 27. Same problem. We got 24 total. Okay, there's 24 total. There's six white. There's eight dark. And there's 10 milk. Selecting three candies. All right, what's the probability that at least two are milk chocolate? Oh, okay. Now, what that means is You could have two milk chocolate, which is actually what we just did the last problem. That's 315 over 1,012. Plus, it could be three milk chocolates, which now I don't know if we did that in the previous problem. Uh, yeah, right here. What's well, probably that all three are milk chocolate? That's 15 over 253. And so I just would add those two together. So let's see here, 315 over 1,012 plus 15 over 253. And there's my answer, 375 over 1,012. Right here it is. It's C this time. We got a different one this time. But that's what my answer would be. Okay? Which we had just done this, and we had just done that. So we just add those two together. That was the two previous problems we did. Okay, so when it says at least, see when it says at least two, that means two or more. When it says at least two, that's the lowest you want is two. So you got two and three. You add them together. Okay, yeah, there's more, man. Ooh, yeah. 28. Bowl has 24, so we got the same 24 total. Okay, we've got six white, eight dark, ten milk. Are right, you selecting three candies? All right. What's the probability that you have no white chocolate? You have no white chocolates at all. Okay, so what that is right there then? Probably that you have no white. Okay, so what's desired here? You don't want any of these. You want all those. So of these 18, you want three of those 18 right there. You do not want any of these six whites. So of these 18, the dark and the milk, that's what you want. 
And of course there's 24 total, you're selecting three total. That's what, how you'd set this one up. You do not want any white, which means you want three of these 18 right here. All right, so we do this again. 18, NCR three, divide by 24, NCR three, and I get uh, right here, 102, 253. B, oh, another one, another B, another B. Okay, let's see the key here. That's right, yep. All right, 29. Get to it here, I think. All right, here's 29. Okay. A bowl has 24. Or it's the same thing. We got 24 total. We got uh, six uh, white chocolates. We got eight dark. We have 10 milk chocolates. Okay. You're reaching the bowl, grabbing three candies. All right. What's probably that you have one of each kind? You have one of each kind. Okay, so what's desired here? All right, what's desired? You want one of these, you want one of those, you want one of those. So that means I'm going to have a combination of the six whites, I desire one of those. And then of the eight darks, I desire one of those. And then of the ten milk chocolates, I desire one of those. And that's what's desired. The bottom's the same every time. 24-3. But of the six whites, I want one of those. Of the eight darks, I want one of those. And of the ten milks, I want one of those. All right, so let's punch this one in. All right. All right, so uh, six NCR1 times eight NCR1 times ten NCR1, and then I'm going to divide by 24, NCR3. Okay, and that's going to be 60 over 253, which looks like D down here at the bottom. We got us a D. 29, that's it. That's it. Yep. All right. Now, three more problems, and we're done here. 30, a warehouse employs 21 workers on first shift. All right, so... Uh, I'm going to have to get a piece of paper here, I think. All right. So we got 21 on first shift. We got 17 on second. And then we got 13 on third shift. Eight workers are chosen at random to be interviewed about the work environment. Now let's add these up before we go on. That's 51. This is 30 and 21, 51 total. 51 total workers. Okay. Eight workers are chosen at random. So we're going, we're uh, selecting eight workers to be interviewed about the work environment. Find the probability of choosing exactly four, exactly four third shift workers. <clears throat> All right, there you go. So what we desire. Desired over the total. That's my probability, okay? What's desired here is we want exactly four third shift workers. So of these third shift workers, there's 13 of those. I desire four of those. Which means I desire four of these other ones right here. Okay? I got to have four of them. See here? I'm selecting eight. So it means I want four of these and I want four of those. Okay. So that means on the top here, thir of these 13, I want four of them. And then of these, what is that, 38? Of those 38, I desire four of those. On the bottom is my total. And there's 51 total. And we're selecting eight total. So that's what's on the bottom. All right. So let's punch her in. So, 13 NCR4 times 38 NCR4 
divide by 51 NCR 8. Okay, change to a fraction. Oh, no, no, I don't think you do on this one. Round it three places. So 0.0828, oops, get it on the screen there. 0.0828, and this 8 makes the 2 go up to 3, so 0 0.083. 0 0.083 is what I got. And uh, that's right, man, that's the answer. Okay, now let's do this one here, same way, 31. 31. Okay. A shipment of seven microwave ovens contains two defective units. A restaurant buys four of these units. What's well, probably that the restaurant buying at least three non defective units? Okay. All right, so let's write this out. There's seven ovens. Okay. There's two defective, which means there's got to be five that's not defective. Okay. All right, so there's seven microwave ovens, and there's two defective ones. Okay, so that's how they get this. Okay. Now, a restaurant buys four. All right, so the restaurant's buying four. Well, it's probably in the restaurant buying at least three non-defectives, which means three or more. Which, three or more, so that means three or four. Okay? So that means I gotta I gotta do the three, set that up, I gotta do four, set that up, and I gotta add them together. Okay? All right, so what's the uh, probability that they so that they uh, get three non-defective ones? All right, so what's desired then? Of the five non-defective, we desire three of them. Which means of the two defective ones, we desire one of those. We really don't, really don't desire it, but that's what we desire as far as getting three. On the bottom, there's seven total, and we're, select, and we're getting four total. All right, that's how you set that one up. Okay. Now, as far as the four, what's the probability that we get four non-defectives? That means of the five non-defective ones, we desire four of those. And then of the seven total, we're selecting four total. So that's how you do the four one. Okay. So we des of the five good ones, we desire four good ones. All right, over here, that we get three non-defectives. That means of the five good ones, we want three of them. But of the two bad ones, we desire one of those. That's how you set it up. All right, so let's do this. All right, so uh, uh, now what you can do now, you can cheat on this. Since both of these are divided by 7, 4, you can do this. Here. You can do this plus this and then hit equals and then you can divide by this one time. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this times this plus this, hit equals, and then I'll divide by that. Instead of doing this times this, divide by that, plus this, divide by that. See, I'm dividing both of them by this, so I can just go ahead and add these and then divide by that. Okay, I think I over explained that maybe, but anyway. All right, so I'm going to have uh, 5 NCR 3 times 2 NCR 1 plus, and then this one over here, 5 NCR 4, and then hit enter, and then divide by 7 NCR 4. And I get this here, 0.714. And that is right. There it is. Okay. Now, one last problem here. Very, very last one here, 32. Okay. Six sales rep representatives for a company are to be chosen at random to participate in a training program. The company has 12 sales representatives. Two in each of six regions. 
All right. So let's say here uh, we got we got region one, two, three, four, five, six. We got two in each one of these, which means we have twelve total. Okay. Okay. So that's what we have going on. All right. Back up here in the top, it says six sales representatives are to be chosen at random from these 12. Okay. So we're going to select six of these 12. All right. What's the probability that the six sales representatives chosen to participate in the training program will be from only three of the six regions? Okay. So, all right, so what's desired over the total? The total, there's 12 total, and we're selecting six, so that's really easy to figure out. Okay, now here's, here's what you have to do. First of all, there's six regions, and we want only three of them, so that means we're going to do regions right here. I'm going to write it down. Of the six regions, we desire on, we desire our uh, representatives to be from three of them. Okay? And then, uh, I think uh, once we do that, then, so like, suppose I've... Select from this one, this one, and this one. And then there's two, four, six. There's my six people. So there you go. That's how we would do it. Okay, so of the six regions, we desire all the uh, representatives from those three. All right, so let's see here. I'm going to do six NCR three divided by 12. NCR three, and I get 0 .0909, .09, which is uh, not right. Let's see here, two in each six regions. What's probably the six sales representatives chosen to participate in the training program would be from three of the six regions. Oh, okay, I hit a three right there. Right there, I hit a three. You see that I had it set up, but I hit a three right there instead of a six. Okay, there it is. 0 0.0216. Man. You gotta watch what you're typing. And of course I got this light here and I can't hardly see my calculator when I'm typing this in, but there you go, 0 0.0216, and that's it. Alright, so we've done this whole review. Uh so you try your best on the review and uh, hopefully you get it all. If not, though, if you need to holler at me, yell at me, I'll try to help you all I can. So have a good rest of the day, okay? Bye-bye.